Okay. Yes, this is Alt F4. This is my song that I did on, uh, what was it? Overdub Mothership Volume 2. It started off as an all-nighter project and it didn't get accepted. So I was like, oh no. Now it's a song on Overdub and it's Alt F4 and it's very cool. I, yeah, it's in C sharp minor and it's got a funky chord progression. So let's get into it. Uh, for starters, this sound, it's like kind of a computer startup sound kind of deal. I, I was curious, I was like playing piano one day. I just wanted to start from like an F and just go up in fifths all the way. All the white keys. I noticed it sounded like a little, like a Windows startup sound. I did it in the wrong key. I was thinking, oh, uh, C sharp. So I'll do it all in C sharp. And then C sharp was not the right key because it was C sharp minor and I did it in C sharp major. And so I just shifted that up three semitones. Originally it was like this. Which also sounds cool. It also added this like cool grainy sound to it. So I was like, that's cool. And I kept it. And did that's how I made it. And then you render it and put some effects on it, probably like a vinyl or something, and then pitch it up. And that's how you got the intro sound. That was a long time for that. After that, after the intro sound, it like, I was kind of thinking, oh, the computer opens up or whatever. And then you're in like the menu and you have to type in your password to get into whatever this thing is. I wanted to make kind of a, a password input, but my keyboard, I don't know if you can hear, let's see. Oh no, oh no! So, my keyboard is very loud. So if I was actually typing, and it's very clicky, it would be too loud, it'd be too like clacking and gross. So I just like tapped the keys and that seemed to work fine. But yeah, I recorded myself doing that on my phone, on a voice memo, and then I slapped it in here and I made it fit in like the time. It just kind of felt like too empty when it was just this. So I kind of made this like humming background pad, hence the name of the thing. Just really far in the background to kind of fill out that space. That's just, uh, oh, it's got some like pitch warble and stuff, uh, down sampling, and then where is 80. The reverb and then tape stop to just you at the very end. It just kind of like fills up the background a little bit more and puts you in a sort of strange atmosphere of like, oh, I'm in a, I'm in a computer. Uh, it sounded cool. Um, then there's like a little like sub riser and then silence. That little click is isolated. Where is that? And after the click, the audio just cuts off like really quickly. I was also half making this with like with the video in mind. When you click on the the password, then the thing just goes to black, and then this, this like crazy color thing happens. Um, uh, this is a combination of a bunch of things. So this intro synth, which I'll get to in a second, it sounds like this. Because originally it was just like this, but bit crushed rising up and that was dumb. It's a dumb intro. So I recorded that out and then I just like layered it on top of itself, stretched it out a ton, put a bunch of effects that I think are gone now. Alone, that stretched out thing sounds like this. And I added it like a sub drop on top of it just to thicken it up and then like more effects on top. All that good stuff and then it all comes together and then rises into the intro. Yay. So, oh, I'll, this song is in 5-4. I don't know. I think I just kind of wanted to make a song that was in 5-4 and so I did. Bum, bum. Uh, what's in here? So it's just like a little saw wave pluck, no effects on it, and it's playing that melody. Um, and in the effects, it's yeah, it's got vinyl, which is gonna give it the warble, warble, and then more effects just like for transitions and stuff. Very simple. Hyper chorus gives it a bit of like the vintage feel, 
and then OTT vinyl sound geyser. All that good stuff, just to make it fit in. Backup melody is just like a, probably like a flex or something or labs. Labs. It's just like swapping back and forth with pan flow. This is just like a quick thing that I use to give like more panning effects and then I give it like half wet OTT. Very fun. Transverb. This is a strange effect that I've only ever used like in this song alone probably. It's the same company that made Scrubby from the Chroma remix. This weird like glitchy uh, kind of crystallizer -y reverb. It's just adding weird like glitches in the background and then all that stuff is just being processed through a crystallizer. Giving out weird like creepy vibes kind of. Vocal, it's just like a vocal shot that I found, a vocal riff that I found in another one of those like vocal packs that I have. Um, more effects, more swooshes and stuff, and then the pad. Um, a Reese bass in Harmless. Yeah, it's really just like a, a, a saw wave that has a EQ on it. And then I also add just a single uh, triangle wave as like a lower bass just to give it more thickness. More like a solid bass. Then labs. I just found texture pads, just sounds, a violin or violas as well as a layer. And then what is this? A choir. A choir. And all together that sounds like that. And it's a little bit crunchy, just probably from like, yeah. So in here I have a Maximus. It's just like kind of saturating it all together. All that in that one bus gives it like the kind of crunch in the background. And so together, that's everything. Yeah. Then in the build, it's just like more risers and stuff. And this is like a free sample pack that I found that just has a bunch of like glass impacts. And I really want more of these, but I can't find them. Um, but it's just like glass breaking sounds. Reversed, it sounds very cool. And then this is probably just like got some uh, MP3 fi on it. Yeah, on, on this intro, this stretch is being modulated. There you go. Then there's also this, which is just like bass stems that are rendered out and then frequency shifted up. Clap, crowd effect. I have like a selection of like 10 samples that I just use in almost every song. This is one of them. I don't know where I found it, just like a free sample pack from years ago. And then like more risers and effects and stuff. Just to add to the intensity. This pre-drop is like an online like text-to-speech thing that just said Alt F4. Alt F4. What is that bloopiness? That bloopiness is... I'll just walk through the whole process. Alt F4. Beautiful. Frequency shifted to make it sound a little more like warped and funky. Alt F4. Graylon is just auto-tune and it like kind of snaps it to these four, three, four notes. It's Alt free by F4, the way. Four, four. And then this is the secret sauce, extra cell exchanger. You can search that online. And basically what it does is it tries to recreate the spectrum as individual sine waves and turn the mix all the way up. Alt F4, four, four. Alt F4. If I bring this partials down, you can actually see that a little better. That is a single oscillator that's trying its best to recreate the sound. So then you turn the mix down again and Alt F4. Four. Just like a fun texture in the background. Then OTT, sound goodizer, all the ish good stuff. Just thicken it up. And then this comb filter comes in later. And this is also used just throughout. So yeah, now we're at the drop. The fun part. Woo! Start with the drums. Uh, the drums are fun. Every single snare here, none of them are going to sound the same. They're all, all going to be slightly different. A bunch of different layers that I pitched up and down, did things like that. Uh, this snare is one that I actually made and it sucks, but when you mask it with enough other good effects, then it works. It's a basic snare tutorial you find on YouTube. And then the kick drum is a kick sample I found online. Again, of course, this is a strange technique that I did though. Simple kick, uh, but then you add on this weird plugin called G. Oh, this is also DFX. So this is also the same people that did that other. I think I might have just like just found this company. 
crazy glitched, distorted sound. And then the rest of this is just trying to make it sound good again. And then Camel Crusher at the very end. And so that is the kick all together. Very nice. Yeah, so like, it's kind of a call and response thing. Even though it's the same sound, it's just the drums kind of change and the, the cymbals in the background kind of change. More effects are added. That it kind of feels like a call and response in the single sound. Yeah, the drop dubs. Um, in here is actually a Harmer, which I dragged probably like a Mission World Shaker. Is that his name? Mission World Shaker. There he is. Impulse in. Probably something like that. And so when you play it. And that's already like a interesting way to give like a tonality to a sound. I am like modulating through time through that. It's essentially like a wavetable now. But then I also have the phaser. Just like changes the texture of it a bit. And what this is actually doing is based on this width. So if I bring this width down. You can see that shape start to appear. And that offset is just moving it up and down the spectrum. But you make that width really tiny. Then it's not really affecting like the entire sound as like a filter, but then it's affecting each individual like harmonic of the sound. If I just hold this here, it's kind of stagnant. That's giving it a bit more movement. Because I chose a C minor impulse, I'm playing a C sharp. That's going to play C sharp. And then if I go to D, it's going to pitch it up. If I go to the effects, it's got frequency shifter for like effects later on. Vocodex, giving that lasery sound. Serum effects is actually doing a bit of heavy lifting. Um, that kind of smears out the sound a bit. And then MP3ify, just make it sound more glitchy. And then the rest of the stuff, it was really bad in like stereo. Maybe you can hear that if you like, you're listening on your phone without like headphones or whatever. There's a lot of like phase cancellation. So this patcher, it's taking like the right information and it's shifting the phase of it and it's just making it like more aligned. And then another equalizer has just taken down like the, the, the sides a bit. So that's the main sound. And it's also got a chord layer next to it. Very simple, just like a saw wave pluck that gets texture from this convolver. There's a clap in there. And then OTT, da da da, yada yada. Very nice. Layered together, that gives like the, the chord background. Uh, there's also a laser. This is just one sine wave laser. And then I think the same exact thing, but with a saw instead. And so with all that together, it sounds like. And in the background, there's also this like kind of offbeat. It's just like an FM sync kind of deal. That's not it. Where is it? It's just got like FM from this guy, the filter to not destroy my ears all the time. All that together. Over here, I've also introduced a couple more effects. So this is just that same pad from before introduces like a, a background filler. This balance will just cut it off in the gaps where it's not like where the rest of the stuff isn't playing. So then there is this guy. This is another use of the Harmer phaser thing. This is a sample that I dragged in and I now want to like make it all spectral and weird and gross. This took so long to make, but this is like a preset that I have for Prism that basically colorizes the sound. You can start to sound, it's here it's a little bit more like kind of chroma sounding. And that's because every single one of these like sine wave partials, if you look up there, It's moving into scale. Also another custom phaser, it's less stuff passing through. So when you mix it up, it sounds a bit more like uh, glitchy and, and lossy, I guess. 
And I'm probably modulating that as well as the song plays. So let's see. Yeah, so that offset is going down and making it sound like it, it gives kind of a spectrally glassy, glitchy texture in the background. A comb filter, just kind of reverbing it out. And then another comb filter, which does a stereo effect. That gives a lot of stereoness. And then this glitch fire is going to add like a speckly like texture to it. And then glitchy freeze is doing the same thing. Res synth, my friend. It is adding some harmonic chordness to it, adding acting as a resonator, and that's that's what this sound is. And that chord actually changes throughout the thing, so over here it's going to be different. Yes. OTT, EQ. Good background synth stuff. Uh yeah, most of this is just variations and stuff, more effects. Here is something new. Um, so this is this, this is the effect that I'm going to explain right now. It's actually, if I go to that laser again, it's just the the same like that 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 pattern. But what the comb filter does is it adds a bit more like a grindy texture, and then this delay is actually. Like, there's no dry signal, it's only wet. There's one single, like, feedback, but then when you modulate this time up, it slows it down. I guess you could kind of do the same thing in gross beat, but I don't like gross beat, so I just did it here. When I did that, I was like, oh, wait, that's kind of an interesting flow. So then I kind of adopted the da 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 Ah, this guy, this guy is a different sound. It's in Serum. That's not it. Where is it? Without any effects, it sounds like... Uh, this is a wavetable that I made, actually. And it's basically just like abusing this thing down here so that it like makes a very spectrally wavetable sound starts to sound like a kind of lasery thing and then just more effects on top. And this is also the same one that's used in the midsection and actually went with like the higher notes. You can hear the kind of like a metallic kind of clanky sound. And I really liked that. So I uh, took advantage of that in the midsection. That sound is introduced here and then it's like more of the forefront in the midsection. So I have the this UJAM finisher micro. This is like, it has a bunch of effects as like transitional kind of things. And this Earth 2 Isis, it's basically like, just adds like a really resonant low pass and like reverb. And so I use that in transitions. And also over here, I use it as like, to just throw you back really quickly before it like sucks you back into the song again. Yeah, that's what that effect is. That's what this effect is. Same vocal sample, but an octave up over here. There's a piano. Ugh. Kind of a funky chord, but in context, it sounds all right. Yeah. There's a piano that's on top of it, and it slowly starts to like shift down with a frequency shifter. As opposed to here. And that's also like the transitional effect there. Midsection time, yay. This is just a thick old little saucy. Oh, that's just a sub. Ah. Very crunchy. How did I make this sub? It's 3x oscillator because I used to do that. It's just a sine wave. It's very quiet as it is. But then you add erosion to it. Free erosion thing that I found on Reddit. A wave shaper will thicken it up. And then another wave shaper will thicken it up again. Just going to boost the low end and the high end and take out some of the mids. And then distortion. I think all the like effects are the same. There's just more different things here. So the that serum patch that was before is now like the main star of the show. And this is just like a different position in the wave table that I had. I don't think there's anything else that's new. It's just more of this thing. Yeah, and then the laser on top. This is like an ARP in, yep, 3X Oscillator. And it just kind of glitters off into the distance. Yep. 
square arp, which is EQ reverb, spectral gates, emitter, which is just like a, a noise gate, and then EQ, OTT, glitch fire is again going to like make it sparkly, and then OTT. Oh, I, I have no idea why I added this, but I love it so much. I think I was just like searching for vocal samples, probably for something that's like reasonable and mature, and I found this. Yeah. Which just makes no sense. Why is it here? But I love it so much. Yeah, so this is the same intro pad that I just like rendered out and chopped up as like a background filler again. Yeah, so then the intro comes back again. Same exact stuff. Yeah, then the, the tempo slows down and it goes from 150 to 125. And the reason for that is because Uh, same sounds as before though. It's all the same harmer patch. I think all this is actually just the exact same. Um, basically just copy pasted the thing, but then everything's now slower. It sounds different enough that I can get away with it. And then here, the pad slowly fades out and the stuff starts to like frequency shift down and like fade out. And over here, I, I learned about this meme in like high school and it's been like one of my favorites. And I was like, I wanna add that in a song. So it turns out the background music in it is copyrighted. I'm glad I looked that up first before I like uploaded it. So they, I basically use like the vocal removal, ultimate vocal removal tool. It's free. Get it if you don't have it. And that somehow managed to like perfectly extract the vocals from it. Change the world. My final message. Goodbye. It got all like the distortion of his voice and everything. It, it's very impressive with how it did it. Yeah, that's the entire thing. Yeah.